In lab 9.3, you are going to be designing a binary counter. And you are going to do this with a single process. Now, the binary counter itself is going to be quite simple. You will just create it with a single process that has a sensitivity list that is sensitive to clock and reset. Just a very standard binary up counter, okay, up down counter. However, one of the issues is that we want to be able to see the counter on the LEDs of the DE0 CV board. That means we can do a couple things. We could either make the counter extremely large and look at the slower bits, like we did in the previous lab where we had a ripple counter. We had to make it 38 bits wide, and then we had to run it, because we were running it off a 50 megahertz clock, and then we went and looked at the slowest bits, and we could actually see them with the human eye. Another way of doing it is say, you know what, why don't we try to slow down the actual clock that drives the counter itself. So what you are going to do is you're going to get familiar or experience with building what we call a clock divider. This 50 megahertz clock coming in is way too fast for stuff that is driven to LEDs. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to create a clock divider. One of the simplest ways to do it is using this thing called a 2 to the n clock divider, which is nothing more than your ripple counter. Okay? So if you think about what we're going to actually do here is let's take a look at the following. Okay, so let's look at kind of the general idea that we're going to do. So I come along <clears throat> and I have, let's talk about the, the clock divider. If you recall, you have a ripple counter that you've created. Okay, and it is just a whole bunch of D flip-flops that are wired up like this, okay, and you've instantiated them, blah, 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 and they're all, they're all kind of running, you know, here comes the 50 megahertz clock, it comes in, and then what you do is you have these all configured in toggle flop configurations, so they're all sitting like this, and then what you do is you drive the next stage with the divided down version of it, and life is so good, and then you plunk off these guys right here, and this is your fastest, so this will be like bit zero, and then this will be like bit one, this will be like bit two, this will be like bit three, and you just have this in your top VHD right now, okay? It's just, it's 38 of these guys. But if you think about what you could do, <clears throat> this bit zero is running at 25 megahertz. So it is a signal that's going like that, and it's exactly half the frequency of the incoming clock. You have essentially divided down the 50 megahertz clock, okay? If you think about bit one, you are going to have one that's slower than that, and it's going to be running exactly half of the previous stage. So it's going to be running at 12.5 megahertz. You have divided down the clock again. Then you're going to have one that's even slower than that, and it's going to run at 6.25 meg, and et cetera, et cetera, all the way out to bit, you know, the 38 or bit 37 out here, and it's like super slow, just super, super slow, okay? <clears throat> you have this already designed. What we want to do is we want to button this up into a new component that is going to be a subsystem that we can instantiate in our top VHD. Okay? What would be even cooler is if we could somehow select the frequency that we want to run at. Because if you think about it, if I box this all up, well actually if I just take this and I say, all right, I'm going to put this into a subsystem. What is the incoming signal? Well, it's my 50 megahertz clock. So I essentially have that, okay? You know that you're using D flip-flops. So you know you need a reset, okay? So you know you need a reset. You know you need an incoming clock. What we want, though, is we want some output clock, okay? So we want to have an output to the outside world that is a slower version of the clock. But what would be even cooler is if we could somehow select which clock we want. So you can, you can do that because you have 38 versions of the clock, all at different frequencies. You could simply route them into a circuit known as a multiplexer. Okay? And a multiplexer, what you're going to do is you're going to have two select lines, and that will allow you to address four different inputs. So you're going to take 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. These select lines are going to come from an input port which will be your select lines. We're going to wire these up to the switches. And you're going to be able to select between one of four of the bits in your ripple counter. Okay? Now, when you think about modeling this, 
This circuit right here is going to have a distinct name, okay? Because I want everybody to be on the same page. So what I want to do is let's look at the exact name that we're going to use here. Okay, where'd you go? We are going to call this thing Clock Div Two Ton VHD, okay? And you might say to yourself, what's with the two ton? Well, let me tell you. This system is going to be called Clock Div Two Ton <laughs> VHD. You're going to create this new file. You're going to put your ripple counter into it. When I say put it in there, you're going to go into your top, cut it, and put it into this new file. Paste it. You might have to do some messing around with creating signals and stuff to make sure it's wired, but you don't want to get rid of that ripple counter. You don't want to lose all of those port maps that you did before. Okay? The reason that it's called 2-T-O-N is it stands for 2 to the N. You know why it's 2 to the N? It's because when you think about how you're dividing this clock, everything is a multiple of 2. You don't get every frequency possible. You either divide by the incoming clock by 2, so that's 50 divided by 2 is 25 megahertz. Or you divide it by 4, which is 50 megahertz divided by 4. Or you divide it by 8. Or you divide it by 16. So you only get divisions in multiples of 2 to the n. So we commonly call this a 2 to the n clock divider based upon toggle flops. You already have toggle flops. You took a D flip flop. You wired its QN back to its D. That's a toggle flop it will toggle every time you get a rising edge of a clock. That happens to divide the clock by two. If you use that output to drive another toggle flop, you will then divide that clock by two, and so on and so on and so on. We use that, to, that architecture to build a ripple counter. Now what we're going to do is say, I have, I'm going to use my ripple counter, I'm going to have 38 versions of my clock, and I want to pluck off four of them, and I want to be able to select which of the four go to the outside world. So you're going to call this guy right here clock underscore div for clock divided. You are going to route into the select two lines which come from switch 0 and switch 1. That will give you four binary codes. The input is going to come from clock underscore 50 and that is the name that is in the DE0CV user's manual. Okay, So that's where that comes from. And then, of course, you're going to have a reset. And within here, you are going to build this functionality. OK. How do you, do you remember how to design a multiplexer? OK. The, a, a little reference for you would be the textbook. OK. That would help. <laughs> a multiplexer is a combinational logic circuit that will select one of its inputs based upon a select line or lines and drive it to the output. All you're going to do is create that with a process. You can absolutely have 38 instantiations of your D flip-flop as a ripple counter in the same system as a process. We can absolutely do that. This is modeling sequential logic. This is modeling combinational logic. It's perfectly legal and perfectly encouraged. The key, though, is that this is going to be its own process. This is, you're not going to instantiate anything here. When you model combinational logic, what you have to do is put every input in the sensitivity list. So let's take a sway. Let's just swag it of how you're going to create that mux. So I come into this thing, and I've got, you know, I'm not making a, an entity. Okay? I'm sitting here as a process, and I want to put in the sensitivity list what I'm sensitive to. What are the inputs to the process. The two, the two switches, absolutely. So select is an input. Are there any more? There's four more. The four clocks that come into the multiplexer that you're going to select, you have to be sensitive to. So you're going to have whatever they are, bit, whatever you want to call them. Let's say you called it bit like 7, and then like bit 9, and then like bit 37. These are examples of you list out bit 24, whatever, whatever. This is a really sloppy example of you have to list the four input clocks that you're going to use, that you're going to select between, 
And then the select lines, since the select is a bus, you can just put it in there, that gives you combination of logic behavior. Now, all you're going to do is once you get in here, you just do something like if select is equal to 0, 0, then clock div gets assigned whatever. You will then choose this input right here. If that's not, if select is not equal to that, then you'll do else if, and you'll say select is equal to 0, 1, then you'll do clock div gets assigned the next one. And you'll do that for all four cases. Okay? So when you build this clock div 2 ton, or 2 to the n, you have some critical things to think about. Number one, it is its own VHDL file that you will build and name clock underscore div underscore 2 to the n dot VHD. You are going to instantiate this in your new top dot VHD. Within this clock divider, you are going to have your ripple counter, which you've already designed and wired. So don't delete it. Bring it over. You are going to create a new process, which will select four of the clocks and produce one based upon the select lines. Okay. So now let's think about what the rest of, this, of the system is. All you're going to do is create that. Then you're going to have a single process counter. And I want to make this puppy 28 bits. Okay. It, all it's going to do is count up. This is a very simple counter. You can go right in the textbook and get the code for it, or you can look at the videos. This is just a single process that's going to say, sensitive to clock and reset. If reset is equal to 1, or reset is asserted, the output is a 0. Otherwise, on the rising edge of a clock, increment the counter. Okay? We're going to make it 24 bits because we have six hex displays here, and we can drive them all. So we're going to drive them all into this, these hex displays. Check this out, though. Each of the four bits, we're going to group them into four bits and drive this into our car decoder.vhd. This is pretty sweet. Now, we, at the top level, we have two subsystems we're instantiating. We have clock div 2 ton, and we have car decoder. These are subsystems that you've already built that you are just going to plop down and wire up. When you do this, you're going to be able to drive all six hex displays, and it will work very similar to the way your ripple counter looked, except you're going to be able to change the frequencies. Okay? In addition to that, let's go ahead and throw the least significant 8 bits on the GPIO1 header so that we can look with the analog discovery and measure the frequency coming out of your counter to make sure you're dividing it right. Okay? All right. So the big question remaining is, what does it look like? Well, there you have it. That's what it's going to look like. Oh, yeah. And we're also going to drive these to the LEDs. So go ahead and throw the bottom 10 on the LEDRs. <clears throat> and this is what you're going to get. You're going to fire up your FPGA. It's going to start counting. And you're going to be able to take these switches right here, and you're going to be able to change the frequency of the clock. Okay? Now, you probably want to know which clock frequencies you're going to select. And the answer is, I'm going to tell you what they are. It's in here somewhere. Here's which ones I want you to select. I want you to select a 25 megahertz version, 191 hertz, 6 hertz, and 1.5 hertz. So you got to figure out which bits of that ripple counter are giving you those. The easiest way to do it, in my mind, is put it into the spreadsheet. Start with 50 megahertz, and then say divided by 2. And then take that answer, divide that by two. Take that answer, divide that by two. You just take an Excel and just go, Whoop! and it'll show you the exact frequency that you're getting out per that bit. Does that make sense? But you are going to choose those. The reason you want those, 25 megahertz is going to haul. Okay, That's what we'll try to measure with the analog discovery. 191 hertz is fast, fast enough you can't see it with the human eye, other than on the higher order character displays. And then 6 and 1.5 are to test whether it's really slowly counting. 1.5 hertz is so slow, it's like aggravating. So I go, that's as slow as you could possibly go. And then 6 is like, okay, I can feel good about that. All right, here's a block diagram of a clock divider that gives you more details in terms of what signals are going which way. And I even give you the entity for the clock divider because I want everybody to have the exact same thing. Your demo will be a video 
that satisfies showing that you can change the clock frequency. I appreciate the videos that are small using the time lapse approach. Make sure that if you do a time lapse approach where you're, where you're recording it like fast and so it plays, it just, the video actually plays extremely fast. Make sure that you're not going so fast you skip over a lot of the steps. Make it so that I can actually see the numbers changing or, you know, so look at your video afterwards and make sure that it actually gives us information. And then you're going to do an analog discovery measurement and you're going to take a screenshot of that. That's going to be deliverable number two. And finally, you will upload your top.vhd and that will be deliverable number three. And that is lab 9.3.